Hey everyone, my name is Nunad Devaka. I'm a technical marketing engineer and I look at the Catalyst 9000 series of switches with particular focus on the core side of things. So I look at the Catalyst 9500 family of switches and the Catalyst 9600 family of switches. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Catalyst 9500X60L4D. This is our newest switch that belongs to our fixed core family of switches. And over the course of this video, we'll be taking a look at this new switch and how it compares and stacks up against the existing family of 9500 series of switches. Starting things off, we're going to take a look at the core portfolio as it stands today. Now on the Catalyst 9000 series of switches, when we talk about the core switches, we have two different flavors of switches. The first one powered by the UADP 3.0 ASIC. Now on this we have, on the 9600 side, we have the supervisor in one. And on the, on the 9500 side, we have the QSRP form factor, 32C and the 32QC models of switches. And on the SFP side, we have the 48Y4C and the 24Y4C models of switches. Early last year, we introduced the Cisco Silicon One Q200 based family of switches. Uh, on the 9600 side, we introduced the Supervisor Engine 2, and on the 9500X side, we introduced the QSRP form factor 9500X 28C8D switch. Now, a gap that was present on the 9500 family of switches was we did not have an SFP form factor offering powered by the Cisco Silicon One Q200 ASIC. So today, with the release of this new switch, the C9500X60L4D, this is an SFP form factor box. So we're now bridging this particular gap. Now, before we take a look at the actual switch in question, I want to take a step question. I want to take a step back to understand the ASIC that powers this switch and also to understand why this ASIC is such a game changer. Now, when you look at the requirements of a switching device, and when you look at the requirements of a routing device, your requirements are slightly different. For example, on the switching side, you want to ensure that the packets are switched out as quickly as possible. And you also want to ensure that the packets are switched out at speeds close to line rate. On the routing side, things are slightly different. This is because you would have typically high speed interfaces coming uh, from your network side and you would have a lower speed links going out towards your WAN side. So you want to have a mixture of interface speeds and because you have the mixture in speeds, you want to ensure that the packet gets sent out no matter what. So you're not so much worried about the latency, but you want to ensure that the packet goes out no matter what happens. Similarly, when we talk about the features in the scale uh, on the switching side, you're typically good of L3. Whereas on the routing side, things are reversed where you're going to be doing mostly L3 with a little bit of L2. Now, the unique value proposition the Cisco Silicon One Q200 brings to the table is that the ASIC is flexible enough to work not only as a switching silicon, but it can also act as a routing silicon. So with this ASIC that we have over here, we are having the convergence between both the switching and the routing requirements. So with that, let us take a look at the actual switch in question, which is the 9500X60L4D. Now, this is a 1RU form factor box, but in spite of this being a 1RU form factor box, we have jam-packed it with interfaces. So we have an extremely high port density with 60 ports that can operate at speeds of 10, 25, and 50 gig, which are your SFP form factor ports. And in addition to this, you have four QSFP DD form factor ports that can operate at speeds of 40, 100, 200, and 400. Now, using a point of reference of the 48 Y4C, which was the UADP 3.0 powered SFP form factor box, we have a total switching capacity of 4.6 terabits per second, which is almost three times the performance that was provided by the 48 Y4C models of switches. Now, this is powered by the Cisco Silicon One Q200 ASIC, so we get all the benefits of the ASIC, uh, where namely we get the high, very high route scale. We have up to 2 million route scales for your IPv4 packets, and we also have ultra deep buffers to ensure that the packets get sent out no matter what. So we have 8 gigabytes of on-demand ultra deep buffers to ensure that if there is a mismatch in speech, the packet gets sent out no matter what. 
Now, for the first time on a core, we're introducing two things. First, we're introducing support for 50 gig. Now, your 50, these 50 gig, they use the same SFP form factor and the SFP optics that you use, they're, they're dual rate optics. So you can invest in the optics today and as and when there is a requirement for the speed to grow at a later point, you'd be able to bump, bump up the speed without uh, uh, additional investment in your OPEX or your CAPEX. We're also introducing for the first time support for IPsec at the core. So the 9500X 60L 4D switch, in addition to supporting uh, uh, LandMaxSec and VanMaxSec, we are also going to be supporting the IPsec capability. Uh, this is not supported in the iOS XE right now, but it is hardware capable and expect this functionality to be unlocked very, very, very soon in a later release. Now, this being a core device, we are very interested in resiliency. So we have uh, resiliency built into the hardware design. Uh, on the hardware front, we have redundant fans, five uh, fans needed for normal operation, one fan that can act as a redundant. Uh, we also have redundant power supplies. We have one power supply is needed for the complete operation of the switch, and we have an additional power supply slot for redundancy. Similarly, when we talk about the software redundancy, Stackwise virtual support will be coming in 17.11.1. So now taking a look at the actual front panel view of the box and understanding how we're able to uh, to have so many, uh, such a high port density on uh, such a small one audio form factor. Now, when you traditionally, when you look at uh, any network devices that we have released in the past, these network devices usually have two rows of ports. Now here, what we're doing is we're packing three rows of ports. So if when you look at the picture on the screen right now, uh, we have row one, row two, and row three, and each of these rows, and because we're using three rows of ports, we're able to uh, pack in 60 ports into a one audio form factor design. Now, coming to the ports themselves, your SFP form factor ports, uh, namely your 60 SFP form factor ports, we're split into two groups of 30 ports each, and these are on either side of the box with the QSFP DD ports, the four QSFP DD ports that can operate at speeds of up to 400 being in the center. Now, the reason why the QSFP DD ports are in the center is because these ports will generate a lot more heat when you compare it with your SFP, SFP form factor ports. And since your cooling is extremely efficient in the center, we're able to keep the QSFP DD ports in the center and uh, not have to either increase the fan tray RPM or increase the number of fan tray units to effectively cool the system. Now, talking about the fan tray, the, 95, the 9500X60L 4D it uses the same power supply unit and fan tray unit as the one that was used on the 28C 8D model that was released early last year. This means that we're going to get all the benefits of the airflow of the fan tray units that the, the 28C 8D switch model had, namely the reversible airflow. This means that you can we can support not only front to back airflow, but you can also support uh, back to front depending upon your rack space requirements. Uh, now, the way we do this is we have two separate PIDs uh, for the pan trays, one PID corresponding to the back to front and a separate PID corresponding to the front to back. So when you're placing an order for the switch, depending upon the rack space requirements that you have, you would need to choose the right PID for your fan tray units. So we have a total of six fan tray units, five needed for normal operations, the sixth one acting as the redundant. Now all six of them, uh, when it comes to the direction, they need to match in the direction. So you can mix and match the direction of the airflow. So a common question that gets asked to us is what's going to happen to our existing family of switches, the Catalyst 9500 high performance series of switches, which are powered by the UADP 3.2 ASIC. Now I want to take this opportunity to make it very clear that our Catalyst 9500 high performance series of switches are not going anywhere. So we're going to continue to invest in our Catalyst 9500 high performance series of switches by releasing iOS X releases for it. And we're also going to continue to develop new features and functionality for our Catalyst 9500 high performance series of switches. What we have noticed is we have a certain subset of customers high scales and very high uh, performance numbers when it comes to the core boxes. And that is essentially where the Catalyst 9500X series of switches slots in. So your 9500 series of switches are not replacing any of our existing model of switches. They're complementing and completing our existing portfolio. 
So if you are using, uh, uh, for example, if you are using a Catalyst uh, 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 6500 series of switches, if you are using a, car, uh, a supervisor engine 2T, then the high performance series of switches would be an appropriate upgrade path for you. But if you are one of those customers who made use of the SUPT XL or the 6880 XL series of switches, then we have the 9500X series of switches to act as an upgrade path to that. Now, in addition to how the switches themselves are positioned, uh, the high performance series of switches are optimized for our core deployment. Now, the X series of switches, the 9500X series of switches, in addition to acting as the core, we can also have it act as an edge device. Now, again, this goes back to the now again, this goes back to the ASIC that is powering these boxes. Like I said, this is a flexible ASIC that can cater to not only the switching requirements but also to the routing requirements. So, thanks to the use of this ASIC and thanks to the support for your encryption technology like IPsec, uh, you can now use the 9500X60L4D uh, not only as a core box but also as a edge device. All right, guys, so that is it. So let me know what you think of this particular box in the comment section down below. Please do like and subscribe this, uh, this video and click the bell icon to be notified when we release additional videos on this YouTube channel. Uh, as a team, we manage this YouTube channel and we keep up updating uh, the content with relevant topics. So if there are topics that we are not covered and you'd like to see us cover it, uh, again, please do use the comment section down below uh, to leave your comments. Uh, thank you all and have a good day.